You know that old saying, 90% done with 90% left to do. <laughs> yeah, another update, and um, thanks for following along. Thanks for uh, subscribing and liking and commenting. Hope you enjoyed the video. Well, welcome back to the hangar. Uh, lots of work is uh, done. Those cones on. Oh, and fitted. And um, I've got the bolts removed because uh, I'm going to be pulling it off again. I still have to do the pitot uh, and the static system. But, um, boy, it's come a long way. Hey, let me show you. A lot of little things. You know, I've said this before, and, and I know you guys have heard it from other people. You know, when you're like 90% done and 90% left to do. <laughs> it, it's so true. Anyways, okay, let's just turn this camera around. And, uh, yeah, everything's strapped, fastened, rerouted. I had to remove my brake lines because they were in the wrong position. So, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, so the brake lines have to be removed. Anyways, that's finished, finished on the other side. Um, I've got the backrests in now. Seatbelt's going to be fastened next. Um, everything's fastened up here. Uh, completely routed properly and uh, and out of the way. Check the m full motion of all the controls. Make sure nothing at all gets in the way of the controls, and it doesn't. And that's very important because there were snag potentials, but not anymore. Um, the unlocks for the uh, for the um, landing gear is here. So you have to kind of move your leg over to the side and re, or, you know and and pull it out or and push it in. Same on the other side. I like that better than what they have normally, where they've got it. Let's take this camera back a bit here. Normally these this cable here, I've seen people just poke a hole, see the old hole there, and then up she comes, and it sits up here, it goes up and down. Well, I've got the third door so this is coming off and this is going to be opening and that would just stick right in the way of me getting in because it sat about that high and yeah I didn't like that so I wanted to reroute it so it's routed underneath and then being pulled forward that way much preferable um, yeah that's what it looks like inside when the um, when the nose cone is on so uh, still a little more things to do, but as far as wiring and all that kind of stuff, is, it's done. It's finished. In case you're wondering what these alligator clips are for, and even if you're not, <laughs> remember the, how bright these lights are? I'm experimenting with different values of resistors, that kind of stuff. That's what that's on there for. So, um, so I can put another one on, check the brightness, and, you know, rather than doing the math, uh, which could be wrong because you know uh, it's based on 13.5 volts but what if you only have 12.2 and whatever anyway so i'm just experimenting by putting different value resistors in the seeing if like the brightness ultimately um the highest value resistor i put in there was at 1k and it was still too bright but the problem was that all three green were green the minute i pulled a lock and one of the lights went red of course the red portion of these draws more power than the green. I believe red on these draw approximately 35 milliamps. It's a lot. And the green only draws 20 milliamps. Is it 20 milliamps? Or? Yeah, 20 milliamps. Uh, and the blue draws about 20 as well. So as soon as you pull the reds, uh, the nose cone green dims down a lot because it's not getting enough power then. I'm not redesigning the circuit. Um, I'm actually thinking of just cheating and getting some little bit of white paint and <laughs> painting these LEDs because they're clear. They're crystal clear LEDs, not uh, uh, you know color LEDs. So if I just dab them with white paint, I think that'll be just fine. I'm gonna try that first. <laughs> I know it's. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I could pull it all apart and revalue, put all different values of resistors for every color LED and all that sort of stuff. And I just thought, you know what? No, enough, 
enough of this. Maybe next winter as a project or something, but this winter, no. I, I want to get this thing in a flying condition so that when uh, spring comes and, uh, and I'm able to fly this thing, I don't have anything left to do. So, um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, paint them white. So, anyways, uh, don't laugh. Oh, actually, laugh. Do laugh, please, because I'm laughing too if I paint them white. I'm going to go, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it works. I mean, functionally, it works beautifully, you know. So, it's just too bright. So, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. I, I have a couple things I need to uh, do yet. Uh, like I said, I got to get mount the windshield here, and then I got to remove this. I've got the windshield drilled and uh, and and so on, ready to accept that uh, third door, and I will be installing that next. So the windscreen will be next, and then once the windshield is installed, now it'll be installed with Clecos that kind of stuff because I want a um, a brow a dash on the top here, probably because this is wide open. So I want to cover that. One other thing I want to do, and follow me, I need to do, not want to do, need to do, is, um, of course, I've got the, uh, the front opening that I purchased for this. Beautiful. You can have access to everything. This airplane is on floats. If that got wet, the magic smoke would come out of stuff, and that would be a very bad thing. Now, the water is not going to come up from underneath. I'm going to be having all this sealed up over here, so underneath, it's not going to splash up. It might splash around here and, and drip in, but I'm going to be sealing this up from the inside, and I'm looking at what I can do for a seal for this, to make this mostly watertight. But on the windscreen, if water comes underneath here, even if I have a dash and drips down. So, yeah, I'm going to give it some thought what I want to do to waterproof this so that uh, anything that comes in from the top, if, it, if for whatever reason I, have, uh, I get water spray or something, it's not going not to destroy my entire EFIS panel. That would be a really bad, bad thing. So I don't think this stuff is uh, is rated for for that. So I need to I need to address that. Um, not a big deal. I'm thinking just essentially uh, uh, installing like a, a rubber sheet or even plastic, a heavy plastic sheet. But rubber would be nicer. That that would just essentially be like a skirting over top of it, so that when you open up this. Uh, you would have to lift this rubber sheet away to get to, if you needed to get to something here, which I highly doubt. But if, if you did, that would be uh, advantageous. But it's got to it's going to have to seal from here backwards as well. So the, whatever rubber seal has to start from here and go underneath and drape down. So. From the bottom, that hole that's there where the nose wheel goes through, uh, I've got a plate that covers that, and then I'm going to be putting a rubber uh, seal around that so water spray does not come up. And any little weep holes, that kind of stuff, I'm not too worried about. There's not going to be a lot of water spray that would shoot into there. But anyways, that's what it looks like with the uh, nose cone on now, and uh, more progress. Uh, been here five and a half hours. And, you know, the time just goes by so fast. Uh, but it's the tiny little things. It's like, oh, this hole doesn't fit. Oh, i got to put a rivet here. Now, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. But anyways, uh, another quick update um, on that. And um, hopefully I'll keep on the updates a little more frequently than the last time. I think the last one was almost uh, seven weeks between updates, maybe eight weeks between updates. Like I so said, the last one between Christmas and New Year's. The one before that, I think, was almost two months earlier, and I apologize for that. Uh, even if I just come here and say, I'm, uh, I'm at the hangar picking my nose. Now, I, I'm not going to show you that, you know, because it's, it's disgusting. And uh, so, you know, and anyone who says they don't pick their nose is a liar. Yeah. <laughs> How do they get off of that? Whatever. 
Uh, I must be getting punchy here. Uh, been here for too long. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for this update. Um, progress and a lot of progress this time, getting uh, one step closer to flying condition. So take care, um, and uh, we'll see you back here in the hangar. Keep your stick on the ice. Bye for now. Yeah, it really is surprising just how much there is to do with the little, you know, fiddly bits. <laughs> Boy, it's almost endless, but I can see the end coming. Thanks for watching.